No, no, Fraser, I do actually really need that, I'm afraid. Yeah, okay. Now, when we are thinking about the life of a professional triathlete, it is all too easy to conjure up images of globetrotting from one sun-kissed race or training location to another, and those athletes getting paid a small fortune for the privilege, right? Well, that may be the case for a very select few athletes out there, but for the vast majority of professional triathletes in reality, that really isn't the case, I'm afraid. No, although they do, of course, choose to live that lifestyle, so we won't be feeling too sorry for them because they are getting to do something they love, or at least we hope they do. Exactly. Well, we thought it'd be very interesting to take a look into the intricacies of how these athletes earn a living and, more importantly, what they actually get paid to do what they love, to swim, bike, and run. <laughs> okay, first things first. When an athlete wants to race as an elite and earn some prize money, broadly speaking, there are two ways in which they can do this. They can do short course, ITU, draft legal racing, where athletes race for their national federation in country colors effectively or they can do non-drafting, long course racing, such as Ironman or other branded types of events, where they actually need to, as an athlete, apply to that same federation to get a license to prove essentially that they are good enough to race as a pro, because you can't just have anybody turning up and calling themselves a professional athlete after all. There are actually some other avenues for racing and earning money too, such as Xterra off-road racing, and many other very well-funded independent races around the globe. But we will drill down into the specifics of that prize money on offer shortly. Yeah, well coming back to the ITU side of things, because after all this is the pathway that a lot of younger athletes take when they're starting out in the sport, Fraser and myself included. What happens is, well, you're probably striving to go to the World Championships and maybe even the Olympic Games, and you want to be part of that national team or your federation squad. If you make it onto that then, well you're open to varying levels of support, and that can differ from country to country, some are more generous than others. Now, take the UK for example, if you were to find yourself on the federation squad on their World world-class support program, then you're open to a whole raft of support services. Medical, physio, massage, travel expenses, and more crucially, this could evolve into some sort of financial support. So you could receive a salary, which would come in monthly into your bank account, which could help massively. And as you progress as an athlete, hit the criteria for the world-class squad and hitting those results that they're requiring, then that can actually evolve into quite a comfortable, livable salary, which, I was kind of on in the past before I went into long distance racing, but I wouldn't say I ever quite made it to that level of salary. Um, just enough for the sweet shot, was it? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty much. No, but it was quite generous, but yeah, I mean, I never quite made it that far. Yeah, I mean, but either way, for athletes, once they potentially have a bad season or they don't hit those selection targets Mark was talking about, all of a sudden that monthly income can vanish almost as quickly as it has arrived, which unfortunately just demonstrates the cutthroat nature of elite level sport. So that is where, if that comfort blanket of the monthly income disappears, the bonus of prize money comes in and becomes really important for athletes. So coming back to that all important prize money, what exactly is on offer for triathletes racing today? Well, for the short course athletes that we've just been discussing who focus on the ITU racing series, the pinnacle of racing for them is the Olympic Games and for them to gain selection for their national Olympic team they need to be racing the World Triathlon Series or the WTS which is the series of ITU events around the world. Yeah now these WTS events are extremely competitive affairs and winning at this level is very difficult indeed but should an athlete win and grab a WTS title they'll walk away with 18,000 US dollars and paying down to 20th place still gives $1,000 for an athlete athletes' efforts on race day. Yeah, now this WTS series comprises of nine events culminating with a grand final which offers a bigger payout of around $30,000 for the male and the female winner. On top of that we also have a series winner and now that's kind of like a bonus pool. They take into account the athletes' top six races throughout that series and actually pay out to the top 35 within that ranking, so also another great incentive to keep the athletes locked into the series. Yeah, and all in all, the ITU are offering these short course athletes multiple levels of earning capabilities. There are continental cups and world cups for the younger and more inexperienced athletes to get stuck into. And in total, the prize purse that the ITU pay over a year is 3.3 million US dollars, which does sound a lot, doesn't it? It does. 
But what are we talking about in terms of earning potential? Well, for the 2018 season, if we take a look at the highest earners from the ITU series, we have Mary Mola on the male side and Katie Seferis on the female side. Now, Mary Mola earned $199,000 from racing alone. Katie Seferis, $177,000 US dollars. And that's just taking into account the racing, and a majority of that comes from the ITU series, but obviously will be padded out a little bit with other racing too. Yes. So it's safe to say that at the very top of the racing tree on the ITU level, there is some really good cash on offer. Plus, obviously, these Federation supplementary incomes that we we're talking about. So there is good amounts of income earning potential for these athletes. Now, although we have talked extensively about short course racing so far, it is actually long course athletes who are earning the bulk of the prize money on offer in triathlon. And they are doing so specifically in Ironman, Ironman 70.3, Challenge Family events, or others such as Xterra, etc. And although the dream of the Olympics burns strong for many athletes, the unfortunate stark reality is that they are just not ever going to be selected. But that is not to say that they can't sustain a living from the sport. Indeed, far from it. Yeah, and that is where long course racing fills the void for these professional triathletes. And I've actually dug out some stats <laughs> to grab right now. In 2018, globally, there were 35 Ironman races with a total prize purse of 2.6 million US dollars, 71 Ironman 70.3 races with a total prize purse of 2.2 million dollars, 29 challenge family races across both distances, totaling 1.1 million dollars, and 12 other events such as Xterra Worlds, Escape from Alcatraz and such, $1.2 million. Now, clearly there are plenty of opportunities for athletes to earn some prize money. And indeed, from those nearly 150 races that Mark's just talked about, there's a total prize purse of nearly $7 million on offer. Sounds good, but when you actually start drilling down into the specifics of the prize purses, it can actually start to get a little bit depressing for the athletes who are trying to earn that money. Now you might say, why is that? Well, let us explain. Yeah, well, for the vast majority of those 71 Ironman 70.3 events, the winner will take home just 3,000 US dollars. Fifth place will take home a mere $500. And then even when we go over to the full distance Ironman side, the winner will take home maybe $8,000, sixth place $1,000. And at a glance that maybe sounds quite nice but when you take into account the demands of the sport and the fact that we can't race every weekend, it's not quite as good as you think. So putting that into perspective, these races are always fairly competitive affairs so actually getting into that top five or six requires a fairly good level of racing, in fact a very good level of racing. And once you factor in things like your travel costs to get to that event, your accommodation, all the other intricacies of going to a race, there isn't really much left over. And well, suddenly the glamour of being a professional athlete has worn pretty thin. Yeah, nonetheless, the rewards for long course racing and for the athletes at the top end of that can be reasonably lucrative because for the Ironman World Championships, the winner for both male and female takes home 120,000 US dollars. And actually, if we take a look at the 2018 season, the highest paid male and female athletes, well, they took home a fair amount. We had Daniela Arif who won the Ironman World Championship. She took home a total of $201,000 in prize money for the whole season. And Patrick Langer, also Ironman World Champion, took home $135,000 US in prize money for the whole season. But on the flip side of that, if we take a look at the 20th highest paid athlete of the 2018 season, they took home just $73,000 US, which don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of money, but actually for an athlete of that caliber, it's not as much as you'd expect. No, it really isn't. And I suppose what we're driving at here is in the grand spectrum of global sports, triathlon's earning capacity comes in as a pretty low affair, doesn't it? Now, according to Forbes, and although I don't like like for like comparisons, but I'll go on anyway, uh, average salary of an NFL player is $2.1 million. Take Major League Baseball, well, we're up to a cool $4.4 million. Now, I know that is exceptionally high sums of money, but let's take a sport like tennis. And currently, mid-season, the 20th ranked male tennis player already has a mass earnings of over $600,000 US dollars. So, to compare back to our 20th place triathlete, really, there's never a race that triathlon's going to win, is it? 
Now it isn't all doom and gloom however, there is light at the end of the tunnel for professional athletes because they can supplement their income from prize money with sponsorship endowments where they can hopefully get some extra base salary payments and bonus payments too. Yeah and this is where it gets quite good for triathlon because actually athletes can build relationships with brands within the industry and we've got a lot to choose from in triathlon because you can go wetsuit, swimwear, eyewear, bikes, wheels, group sets, running shoes, running <laughs> kit, nutrition and so on and also we've got non endemic sponsors that have no direct involvement in the sport but what might help financially. Yeah but don't get us wrong it is by no means easy for athletes to secure contracts with these brands and more often than not athletes aren't actually only offered say an equipment only deal which although sounds lovely cash is always something that they're trying to get back from those sponsors because as I was often told unfortunately you can't pay your bills and you can't go get your grocery shopping with some nice spare running shoes or an extra bike frame. So you might do it really quickly. Though. Yeah. <laughs> The model of that story being that cash is always preferable if you're trying to be a professional athlete. Yeah, and in addition to that, we've also seen the emergence of triathlon teams. So in the likes of BMC, VFIT, professional triathlon team, very similar to the cycling professional tri triathlon teams, where athletes can secure places onto the teams and they're essentially given a salary. They'll be given all the kit that they need, they'll be given travel expenses and whatnot. Now obviously this does lock them down in terms of how much sponsorship they can get outside of that, but they have the financial security, which is massive as an athlete, potentially with injuries along the way and whatnot. So that's fantastic. I'd actually, I'd love to see more of this because I really think this is great for the progression of the sport. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Okay then, now we have done our very best to try and open the lid in the world of professional triathlon and explain to you just how those athletes attempt to make a living. Now I'm sure you'll agree it is by no means an easy way for athletes to try and earn that living, but for the vast majority of those athletes it isn't really about the money, in fact it's more a way of life, a uh, lifestyle I suppose if you will, and that I suppose is what I like the most about sport like triathlon. Exactly Fraser, that's why I made very little <laughs> money from my triathlon <laughs> career, because it's all about the lifestyle, stick yeah. to this fake money here. Um, now if you like today's video, please do hit that thumbs up button and if you'd like to see more from GTN click on the globe and subscribe and if you'd like to see one of those pro athletes that we we're talking about today David McNamee doing his aero testing on the velodrome you can see that by clicking down here yeah and if you want to see a video I did about top tips from the pro triathletes you can get that just here